K.O. Hey guys, y'all remember the old Street Fighter? Like really one of the first versions of it, when Ryu would get knocked out, and then the damn game, and then the video game would go K.O. And then Ryu would make this little sound. Like man, look, Teresa Bletter got a Ryu knocked out moment. Like, folks, this spinning back kick was a thing of beauty. And I'm going to be honest. I don't even think Natalia Silva thought that she was going to land a head kick. I think she was going for, like, a spinning back kick to the solar plexus. It's just Teresa Bleda just, like, trying to duck down and try to get a takedown. And she got kicked in her head. Um, Teresa Bleda is young. Okay, we, we got to understand. You know, the girl 20. And she fought a really, really stupid fight. I mean, just dumb. She burned her arms out in the beginning, okay? And I kind of get it because, you know, Natalia, uh, Natalia Silva was cracking her. And Bleda was just content with just taking them shots. I mean, she was she was content. So she chose to take those shots and felt like she could, you know, handle the strikes. But over time, those head strikes started to accumulate. They started to. And unfortunately, you can't use your head for defense. It's one of the best fighters in the world, Valentina Shevchenko. She always says, it's not good to stand in there and just get hit. Valentina's like, you have to have a defense first mentality. And in the story of Teresa Bleda, she could have won this fight. Actually, Teresa actually was doing quite well in this fight. But the problem is, is that, you know, she kept using her head as a punching bag. She kept using her head as a pair of mitts. And you can't, you can't do that. You can't use your head as a mitt and then think that you're going to, you know, have enough stamina or you're going to have like the wherewithal to come in this fight and actually win. Teresa Bleda to me had the range. She had a lot of range, but she didn't use the range to her effect. Okay, the girl could have been popping a nice long jab to keep Silva off balance. I mean, she, she could have done it. Pop the jab and then when Silva get close, you know, go for that take now. Okay, the thing of it is, Silva is extremely strong. Okay, she was strong, and Teresa Bleda had, you know, a hard time trying to manipulate positions. She had a hard time. Uh, Teresa Bleda spent most of her time, you know, on the cage with Natalia Silva. And so those tie-ups began to just wear her out. And, you know, the commentary team was talking about, well, Bleda, you know, Bleda got this advantage here. And, you know, what fear infuriates me about the commentary team is that a lot of times they don't even know about the damn fighter that they're talking about. They, they, they don't know. Like Natalia Silva <laughs> is very, very heavily, she's heavily, 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 heavily engrossed in jujitsu. Okay? This girl, her jujitsu is very good. But they didn't know that. And I'm like, wait a minute, she's not outmatched on the ground. Now they kept saying, well, you know, this uh, Teresa Bleda, you know, landed in a triangle choke. And I was telling my partner, I said, hey, man, that, that thing, it's not even in right. I said, she's not going to submit Silva, okay, who's been doing jujitsu for damn near, let me see, eight to nine years of her life. Because, you know, Silva is, is young. She's been doing jujitsu for damn near almost a decade. I said, she's not going to submit this girl with that. Yeah, as you have to understand, in Brazil, if you are a fighter, okay, anytime you take them steps, the first thing that these people learn is jujitsu. Like, you know how football and basketball are, are national pastimes over here? Well, over in Brazil, people learn jiu-jitsu. That's what they do. And if you're a fighter, you, you have learned jiu-jitsu for some period of time. You, you've learned it. And I kept saying, you know, Natalia Silva isn't going to get submitted by this triangle choke. It's not going to happen. She was defending it well. And, you know, I thought Michael Bisbean would see that she's defending. She couldn't get, she couldn't get that, that triangle choke synced in. Because Natalia Silva was defending it well. And what Silva kept doing was putting her hands around the hip of Teresa Bleda. And so this was keeping Teresa from actually sinking that triangle choke in. Okay, like Natalia Silva really was never in any danger. Okay, but Teresa Bleda kept that submission going for most of the round. So Bleda was doing well. But what she did was she made the mistakes of a 20-year-old person. Okay, immature. It's just maturity and just understanding what to do. I still wholeheartedly endorse Teresa Bleda. I think she deserves to be here. I think that what happened is she got in there with an opponent with much more stamina, okay? 
And, you know, also Teresa Blood is going to learn that you can't blow your load. OK, you can't just sit and grapple with somebody for position. You can't keep doing it. You have to disengage, reset, catch your breath and then go again. She's going to have to learn some things like using a jab to get in. Entry jab. Using that damn lift to your advantage. Throw some leg kicks in that, in that hole. Like, I mean, do, you know, do these things to use your limb. And Bleda didn't. She did a poor job of using her limb. I mean, had she done, like, had she done any, any amount of anything using that length, especially popping a jab, this could have been a different fight. This could have been a different fight. It wasn't like Natalia Silva was doing anything very, very complex. It's just Silva was very fast. Very, very fast. And she had a speed advantage. That's it. But timing beats speed. Okay? Natalia Silva timing now. I got to I got to give it to the girl. Her timing was good. But this is a fight to me that Bleda kind of gave away. She kind of gave it away. Okay? All she had to do was, was keep that big frame. Keep pushing that big frame on Silva. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Get against the cage and throw strikes. Stop trying to wrestle with her. Just start throwing some knees and some strikes. Start doing that. Maul her. See, she ain't really want to model. She kept going for this, this takedown that most of the time wasn't even there. Learning experience for Teresa Bleda, but it was a very, very, I mean, it was, I mean, this girl, she took so many damn shots, man. It's like by round, I mean, really, Teresa Bleda ain't doing round two. She was ready to go early. I mean, because in round two, she was taking these deep breaths, man. And I said, yo, if Silva don't knock this chick out now, I said something wrong. Okay, because that knockout was dead. Teresa Bleda had her hands down, and she went into survival mode. Then she started eating unnecessary shots. Like, she started eating that right hand. And I'm like, Teresa, just put your damn hands up. I know you're tired, but damn, protect your chin. Nope. Teresa Bleda went out on her shield, man. And shout out. I mean, the referee let her fight. <laughs> that referee, I can't remember who the hell the referee let them go. And, uh, you know, sometimes... I think the refs, you know, refs like this ref was good because I think the fight was close. The fight was close until the knockout. I felt like Natalia Silva was already up around. No, I felt like Natalia Silva and Teresa Bleda was one to one. And I felt like round round three was going to be the deciding factor. And Silva said, F it. <laughs> We're not leaving this in the judge's hands. I'm just going to knock this chick smooth the hell out. 